More Mighty Number no. 9, and this part we've dragged uh, another pe- person who knows his Mega Man's. Uh... Into the mud. Yes, Ryan. Yes, hello. This isn't quite Mega Man, though, it's much, much worse. <laughs> <laughs> This is Mega Man X6. I, I wish that was on the box. <laughs> it's like Mega this, Man, but this shit. This isn't quite Mega Man. It's much, much worse. <laughs> so, so Ryan, was this, um, just because we spent the last two parts talking about the kickstart and how it fucked everyone over, was this something you, you followed from day one? Yes, it is. Mostly because not so much that Inafune couldn't do no wrong. It's just I was curious as to, given... A lack of Capcom's bullshit, because it was pretty obvious at the time that Capcom and Inafune were not doing well. You know, what kind of game would he make if he was given the freedom to do whatever he wanted? And the freedom to do whatever he wanted showed that he's incredibly cheap. Which is it's funny, because we brought it up in an earlier part. It was weird that at that point everyone was like, fuck Capcom, yay Inafune. Now people are more like, fuck Inafune, yay Capcom. I wouldn't say yay, Capcom. I would say, well, at least they're doing something with Mega Man. Took you long enough. Yeah. We well, you know, there are, there are like, I, <laughs> I've read, I've read certain things um, online. Which again, they they may be completely, <laughs> you know, bullshit. But apparently, after all the shit with with Inafune. Um, and like him leaving Capcom and stuff. Apparently, Capcom almost like as a out of a either like a cross between a sign of respect and wanting a lack of of drama. That's why they held off doing some Mega Man things for a while. Um, it, it, yeah, it, it, it's it is, hard to say. It is a shame that they cancelled three different projects within like a year. That really did do them any favors. But I can understand them wanting a, a bit of time between this train wreck and and official Mega Man content. It's it, it's less the lack of it's it's the less of the break, it's more the cancellations as you brought up earlier. It's like you had stuff r- not quite ready, but close to being ready. You kinda owed it to your fans to at least finish the projects that were almost done regardless of their not so much regardless of their quality. If you thought they were going to be bad, they were going to, then that's something in and of itself. But you had no reason to cancel a few of them. It it just it it like it comes it without the transparency. It comes off as being petty, and I think that's what a lot of people had problems with. Nah. Well, because what wasn't one of the reasons why like they canceled Legend Three because they're like, oh, not enough people like want this game, yeah, even well, though the game was almost completely done at that point. I was. It, there was at least it was far enough along to have a demo ready. Oh, that sucks. Well, I mean, because again, like how I I have never played the the Legends game. I know like Derek loves them, but um, like what like I I I know they have their fan base and they have a cult following, but were they that successful? Not terribly, mind you. This was back during the N sixty four PS one where. Quality on things like platformers and 3D adventure games vary drastically because no one really knew how to do them yet. Yeah. yeah on, on the N64, wasn't it just called Mega Man 64? Yes, it's a. It's. I want to. I don't want to say it's a significantly worse, but it's ultimately a slightly watered down, no voice acting, etc. Game version of Mega Man Legends. Ah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um. Fucking Stefan, you and your memes made me lose track of what I was fucking saying. <laughs> Drill! Nah, the brain scratch was very meme because I just left in every load time and just uh, chroma keyed in various shenanigans. <laughs> the goddamn Azamanga Daya. I forget, uh, dude, you, Ryan, you must have done at one point the Hotel Mario intro. No. Oh, you didn't do that? That's, that's, that's the ultimate meme. It was before that became a really big meme, though. Oh, gotcha, so. gotcha. Um. Like, if I did this now, it'd obviously include steamed ham. And <laughs> stuff, <so. laughs> yeah. You know, this this uh, this platforming game is very similar to the one made by Capcom. No! It's in a Fude brand. It's really original. It's a uh, Kenji and Fude dialect. <laughs> <laughs> really? Well, really? Well, I played the entire X series, and I'm not familiar with this version. <laughs> oh, no. It's a, it's a Comcast dialect. Oh, okay. Ah, I see. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Um, 
So it's <laughs> just the slowdown is real there. I know, Mike. This is so. Brian, which which version do you have? I had the Wii U version, I believe. You poor bastard! I apologize, because I believe. Same. Okay, so this is something we haven't talked about yet. On release date, this game was fucked, because I believe the Wii U version would just soft lock and not work. Like it would just crash. Constantly. I never ran it into soft locking, but I did have a ton of slowdown and technical bugs. Yeah, that's what I had. Which too. I. Well, Oh, you. No, no straight up glitches, but I'd say yeah, a lot of like frame rate problems and just kind of poor performance, but no real glitches I found. And it's it, it's just weird because I I'm, I can't remember if that stuff happened on like the uh, the PS4 versions or the Xbox One version. I I seem to remember most of the like the game won't work was just on the Wii U version, which of course led to. Um, the Sonic social media team tweeting out the infamous "It's better than nothing," which you would think if there's if there's one fucking <laughs> franchise uh, that fran- should know about the glass house. If, if there's one fucking franchise that shouldn't make those kind of, of mm-hmm. comments about another franchise, <laughs> you got perfectly timed. Thank you so much for that, Stefan. Perfectly <laughs> timed. If if there's one franchise that shouldn't shit on the um, reception and bugginess of another franchise's games, it's fucking Sonic. Especially because around that time, Rise of Lyric came out. You know, it's just like, uh, maybe not, maybe that, not. That, 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 that's kind of the thing with Aaron Weber. He, 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 he's at, he's on, on one, on one hand, he is, uh, like, self-conscious, but on the other hand, not really that self-conscious with exactly everything. Well, him and the whole team. But he, he's the face. He puts himself in charge, so he gets the blame. Yeah, which... He gets the credit and the blame. He gets the credit and the blame. Although I think in recent years, it's mostly blame. But yeah, it, 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 <laughs> it was it was a very odd, odd choice. And you know what? We Because of the it's better than nothing, that obviously comes from an infamous live stream where it was Inafune. Yeah. I was answering... I believe he was answering fan questions, and they, they had a, a translator... There, who um, when they were talking, I think I forget was it was this was this after the game had come out or was it just before? It was, it was right like before, I believe. Launch. Because I I, yeah. I forget the context of where it's better than nothing came from. It was apparently a uh, a not necessarily a bad translation. It was but a the mistranslation trans- or something. Yeah, the, the the translator didn't do a very good job explaining what he was actually saying. And what's funny is that like, this this is gonna sound like a my uncle works at Nintendo. TJ, <laughs> TJ and I are very good friends with that guy's brother. Um, so I remember the first time he told me about that, I was just like, "Dude, your brother fucked up so much." And he was like, he had he had no idea because he's not he's not like into this kind of scene. Yeah. yeah. And he he was just like he was like, "My brother did what?" <laughs> <laughs> your brother like made a bunch of nerds angry. We were like, your internet. brother's a meme. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, I, I think afterwards he was like, yeah, my brother, he kind of <laughs> he wasn't too happy for a while after that happened. <laughs> so it was like, damn. But you know uh, what? I died right at the end. You know what's, yeah, you know what's funny, though? I'm not sure if, if this will give things away, but <laughs> the, the translator who said it's better than nothing was Ace Attorney's very first voice actor. Really? Yep, yeah, but it's because he, he worked he worked at Capcom for uh, a long time. So uh, yeah, so if everyone everyone who mocks that guy, you're making fun of Ace Attorney. Oh. Which I, I, so, <laughs> so he's he, he's the original objection hold it and all that. <laughs> I guess so. I've I have never played one of one of those games. I've heard nothing but good things from a lot of people. I've just never played them. So um, yeah. There what you go. do you like visual novels? <laughs> The only, the only one I guess you could say I technically played was the demo of Big's Big Fishing Adventure 3, and I was just like, yeah, whatever, this is a thing. <laughs> Don't you th- probably won't get too much out of them, but they're I, they're fairly cheap on eShops now, so worth a shot. I've, I've I've heard they're fun, like, you know, I, I think, like, with a lot of things like that, on Facebook and Twitter, I'll see a bunch of, like, out-of-context frames, and some of, of the dialogue looks funny, so I'll give it that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it's worth a shot if you're into it, because they're pretty cheap. I like that this this guy is like a mix between Grimlock and Gutsman. Well, he's yeah, obviously basically. this he's obviously this game's Gutsman. Yeah. 
He doesn't jump around in a kangaroo suit, though. That reference is lost on me. <laughs> I must say. Cut, cut, cut some man's ass. <laughs> Did it. <laughs> Okay, the the the, the, fun, the, the thing is that everyone just knows like the sound effect and the close-up on them, but they don't rec they don't realize the context. The context is that they're Gusman's in a kangaroo out mascot outfit, stalking the crew and all that. The thing is, Rush can tell it's him somehow and pulls off the tail, which exposes the ass. The joke is that Mega Man somehow knows it's Gusman just by looking at his ass. There, <laughs> <laughs> there. And, and now we get to the uh, Mighty Number, who is the uh, R.I.P. Arlie Ermy impression. Well, everyone has to do an Emery whenever it's military drill sergeant stuff. True. Yeah, which I think is, I think the first time he did it was um, Kubrick's Full Metal Jacket, and I believe he... From what, I, from what I understand, this might be wrong, and I'm just completely out of context for this game, but I believe he was just brought on as an advisor, so because Kubrick wanted that scene to seem authentic, and so they actually had an actor to do that stuff, but I think after a few takes, uh, Ermi was just like, this guy's terrible, let me do it. I think it was either that, or Kubrick suggested that Ermi do it himself, and then... I think it was that he suggested he do it, like, he was, he was coaching him, and then they were just like, why don't you just do it? Yeah, and then... Yeah, because apparently Emery could go for about, like, three hours without ever repeating the same thing. Yeah, because yeah, cause he, he, he had done it for real life for years, so he, he knew that world firsthand. And it is, with, like, if, if you think about, about actors who had a long and prosperous career literally just doing the same thing over and over again, he's most likely at, at the top of that list. Cause, which, like, is, which is funny because according... Because Kubrick was notorious for being very hands-on as a director. Apparently, Emery was one of the very few people Kubrick would let just ad-lib because I, I, of that. I think, yeah, I think I was, because of that, because he wasn't an actor and he was a fucking drill sergeant, he like Kubrick could not, could not um, intimidate him in, on any level, which is probably why Kubrick was like, I'm not going to waste my time, just, just do, do what you want. Yeah, intimidate or correct him. <laughs> yeah, because you hear the fucking horror stories, you know, it's one of those things where, like, you know, good director, but he just... Apparently, just a big piece of shit. Like the way he treated like Shelley Dulong on the set of the show. He made. Oh, he just abused. He just abused her. He made yeah. Scatman Crothers. He made Hong Kong Fui cry on the set oh. of The Shining. You don't fucking mess with Hong Kong Fui, you piece of shit. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> He's number one super he, guy. He is. He, he made. He made George C. He, 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 he fucked with George C. Scott no and Doctor Strange Love. Stefan, let me stop you there. No matter what you say, it's not going to top. Uh, Hong Kong. Theory, yeah, so. dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> True. I, I think a Scatman Crothers from Transformers. Jazz. Jazz. Yeah. So, so uh, Ryan, then, in, in terms, I mean, cause we've talked about in previous parts how this game looks like shit and everything, but in terms of how it plays, how, like, were you, were you amazingly d disappointed with this game? Like, how, how did you feel playing it? On pure gameplay, when it actually worked, it's actually not that bad. It needs refinement, like the combo system needs to actually be built into the level design rather than just kind of being its own thing. Yep. The individual power-ups, like the red power, green dash, etc., could be used more effectively. There's good ideas here, but they tried to stay almost too hard with classic Mega Man to the point where you, they couldn't really use any of it. Okay, Ryan, Ryan, I want to ask, because I, 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 throughout the whole game, I have no idea what those red and green, like, things that pop up over his head do. Okay, you get those from absorbing certain enemies. The red ones increase the power of your shot, and the shots now go through things instead of the standard lemons, which stop whenever you shoot anything. The green ones increase Beck's movement speed. Not the dash, but his regular movement. The yellows are increased defense. Oh, okay. Yeah, because the, the game doesn't... I, I don't believe the game ever tells you what exactly The game do. like, doesn't tell what... you anything. You have to go to <laughs> yeah, the true. menus and look things up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, it, it, it took me, like, halfway through the cryo boss fight to figure out that, oh, yeah, you can charge up the fire move. Because I was like, oh, there's no charge it There's no charge move. Like, I, why would I think that one has a charge move? Don't don't blame the game for your for your failure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you one can of, when the game doesn't explain a single thing to you. <laughs> one of one of the one of the power ups later in the game uh, lets you be able to float. And there's a part where you need to use it, and the game never tells you that you can use it to float. 
yeah, it's it's very, it it's like oh here's the weapon instead of doing like the classic Mega Man, oh he uses the weapon on screen so you see what it is. It just says go into the menu and read about it, and it's <laughs> like that doesn't help. <laughs> Yeah. I don't want to use a menu. <laughs> there and there is well, I'm about to say there is no enclosed instruction booklet, but this game actually did. <laughs> if, Which didn't fit into the that, box. That tier level. There's an enclosed <laughs> instruction manual. This game good. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a piece. Yeah, it's just a piece of paper that's in this game. Yeah. It's just it's just a piece of paper in, in crayon, just saying sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't know that stuff. Oh Thank God. you. Did, you <laughs> Did I just blow your mind with these fun facts? Yeah, I'm totally blowing my mind here. I thought the fun facts were supposed to be fun. Well, the, f those those kinds of fun facts are like fun-sized candies. They're worthless. True. You have to you have to consume a whole bag of them before you're satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> so to get basically one normal-sized bar, yes. <laughs> Like, I don't know whose marketing person thought that was a good idea, but it's like, no one's going to enjoy this. I felt I felt like we just all learned a, a thing about TJ there. I'm not satisfied, must consume more. <laughs> <laughs> TJ just trying to fill out the void in his heart. <laughs> Fun size Snickers bars. We've all been there, TJ. I'm doing it currently. Uh, rela relatable. Yep. <laughs> hashtag relatable. Hashtag, hashtag same. <laughs> ha hashtag not my mighty number. <laughs> hashtag not my Snickers. <laughs> Be like Beck. You eat your Snickers, you hurt yourself when you're hungry. And he eats it and just turns into Mega Man. He turns into bad box art Mega Man. <laughs> bad that's all he's capable of. Bad box art Mega Man is like, is like Sanic. Except the only difference is, you know... Bad Box Hot Mega Man was made by Capcom. It's not just not just the, the Sonic social media team stealing someone else's meme for their own gain. I, I, I still say the Bad Box Heart Mega Man being in Street Fighter Cross Tekka would have been much more well received if A. Capcom weren't being such dicks to Unifuni at the time, and B. Street Fighter Cross Tekken wasn't a garbage game. <laughs> so, so in, go back then. So, in terms of Capcom being a dick to Unifune. What would they, aside from cancelling games, were they doing anything else or was it just cancelling his games? Cancelling his games, they more or less didn't want him to work on Legends 3 at all. So he was kind of going behind their back and they wanted him to just kind of do more and more sequels to other things that he didn't want to work on. The other problem is that Capcom had notoriously gone behind his back regarding various Mega Man franchises. Obviously the X6 one being the more most famous one. Was that was that was that the one where he had wanted the series to end, but did they? Yeah, they the wanted it games? to end. He wanted it to end at five, so he could start working on the Zero s series on Game Boy Advance. Capcom said, "Okay," then immediately turned around and ordered a separate development team to start work on X Six and get that done within like within a year, not even a full year, but within a year. Good job. And that's Capcom. why it turned out so terrible. Yeah, it was so terrible it made Clement cry. <laughs> What? <laughs> you know, I I don't think I've played any of the Zero games. Like in terms of Mega Man, it's, which for me is really just the classics and like, like most of the X's. Like I, I I had the X collection on PS2, but aside from the first couple, like I think I I played like six and seven for maybe twenty minutes before I was just like, nah, I'm good. The Zero series gives you a lot more options as a character, but it's a it's a really hard franchise. Like. Even harder than X. It's is it, is not it, for the faint of heart. Are they good? Like, uh, is is it like is it like it's it's hard but still enjoyable? Like, say a Castlevania, or is is it just like it's bullshit and hard? Uh, it's somewhere in between. It's a generally good franchise, but considering it's on the Game Boy Advance and its level of difficulty, there are bullshit points. Gotcha. There was a DS version that included all four games. Yeah, I'm not sure how exactly well that ran because I never played it. So. Yeah, and then after that was ZX, which had two games. Which was a bit mm -hmm. easier and a bit less throw the walls at you. <laughs> so, but is 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 that the same Mega? So, is it in, in ZX? Is that still Mega Man X, or is, is Mega Man ZX a different character? 
it's a char different character you're playing as, but you have like chips that have like the consciousness and powers of X and Zero and such. That sounds fucked up. It's very confusing. <laughs> it's very confusing. Yes, it's probably why they never went any further than that. So you know, Stefan, you said this guy was doing a bad Lee Army impression. To me, this guy sounds like discount angry John DiMaggio. <laughs> that that true? Like well, well, when he's screaming, but like in the level when he's like doing his like army talk, it's like very obviously supposed to be copying um, the Arley Army. But yeah, screaming, he just sounds like like angry Bender. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know we saying? must show them our peaceful ways by force. <laughs> he sounds like Angry Sandman to bring him back to Spectacular Spider-Man again. It was let me see uh, Brian Delaney, who was in. That's just John a... DiMaggio stage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's he's just in a bunch. He's he's a bunch of small roles in a whole bunch of games and such. He he's video game Wreck It Ralph. Like the voice that they use when they can't afford John Riley. Oh my John God, he's a gun! Oh, I thought I thought um, I thought video game Wreck It Ralph was the guy who played Zomom in uh, Sonic Lost World. Oh, you mean Infinite? Oh no, no, yeah. that's a different guy. Sorry. No, Lyric. He he was yeah. also Lyric, I believe. I th I thought he was video game. Liam Liam O'Brien. No, yeah, the Liam O'Brien. No, it's a different guy. Wait, yeah. no, I think I think he played. I think Zomom played Wreck It Ralph in All Stars Racing Transformed. Uh, no, All Stars Racing. It says right here, All Stars Racing Transformed. Wreck It Ralph is Brian Delaney. Uh, well, then Clement lied to me. That bastard. <laughs> yeah, he plays him in that. He plays him in Disney Infinity. It's the last time I trust Clement in an OP. <laughs> oh boy, we saved the sentient gun. <laughs> We, we saved Bat Talion. We saved Megatron. Hooray. Not big enough. <laughs> <laughs> and also, Infinite is Zaz. Yeah, that, that, that's why I was confused. Oh, bro, I didn't know that. Cool. It's funny because they're both so different voices. I am not weak. Right, right. So I forget. So recently, didn't didn't Beck even get a a bit like a a sprite-based sequel, or he, he guest-starred in a game? There's, like, a crossover thing with between him and, uh... Uh, crap, what's the Integrate? Uh, <laughs> between electric... him and crap? You mean this game? No, it, it, it's Gunvolt? Him. Gunvolt, that's it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Gunvolt series is actually pretty good. It just has some really severe bullshit at really specific points. <laughs> I am honestly surprised that after this, like... Beck did anything else. It's I thought he, he would just die forever. <laughs> I mean, that's more or less what he has been since that gunvolt thing. I like that that cutscene that looks like he's about to beat up that phone. Yeah, that 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 was that was correct. Arg is Gurg. <laughs> this whole scene like feels like something that you'd find in Persona. So I had to put oh, this song in. Yes, you didn't have to. Yeah. Yes, but you did. Just greedy. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> oh my god, why? Because this game does take place in the year 20XX. <laughs> I've never played Persona, so that meant nothing to me. Same. That's on you. Fuck you, bye.